Hello, d and rpg -ers, game masters and such. I'm going to compare Basic Fantasy and Iron Falcon against each other. Now, they're both written by Chris Garman, and they're written for different reasons. Basic Fantasy came out earlier, like 2007-ish, I guess, and Iron Falcon was about six years after that. They both have different feels of play. I play both of them, and I just want to go a side-by-side -side comparison of these two things, and part of the reason I did do Iron Falcon is that um, I'm going to use as a means of increasing math with middle school kids because um, they, they can always use more help with that. I'm going to go through seven different points of comparison. So going straight down the side here, stats, um, thieving skills, the spells, reactions and morale. I'm going to compare one monster belong, skeleton, uh, how the attack things work, and the last one's turning the undead, okay? And obviously, the Iron Falcon will be compared in just what I'm doing this. But one thing you're going to find out is that one thing you could tell is much chiseled down, and there's a higher expectation of knowing what to do before you start. So just a broad stroke, this basic fantasy, the way it's written when you first come in is the assumption you don't know what you're doing, right? It was a beautiful effort put together. Right. And it kind of says, what is this? Explains role playing games, explains the dice and how do you play it? How do you create a character? And it it, it goes through these things. You're not going to see this in Iron Falcon. Iron Falcon is chiseled to just get started. Right. So I kind of like it. I mean, obviously, there's a different field to both of them. He explains sort of why he did it. Create a character, how small it is. And then you're determining abilities. I'm just letting you know. So if, if you're just wanting more how to play a game, basic fantasy would be a better entry into this, right? So basic fantasy really cuts ability scores down to plus three down to minus three based on a 3d6 roll, all right? Iron Falcon likewise does something different, okay, in which it's it's much more broken up. Uh, this almost has like an advanced D&D &D feel to it, okay? And just looking at the points, if you go to page 132, Okay, this is really interesting in Iron Falcon. This is the PDF, right? So I'm just typing 132. They even give numbers that mimic advanced D&D. If you roll, if you get to a strength of 18, you roll the percentile dice to see how much these are exceptional strength fighters, right? Which is kind of cool because I played AD&D AD &D when I was a kid. So I kind of liked that. That was kind of a neat thing to it um, compared to the other one where you just, you're limited at uh, three, all right? So um the rest of it, there's like a difference with Iron Falcon, going back to Iron Falcon, after you do the strength. See, intelligence, they have this grid set up. There's no plus three, minus three on this grid. But it's much more forgiving, I'd say, Iron Falcon, because you don't get a minus three to hit points here. The most you get is minus one. But you can get up to three bonus hit points, which makes a lot different scores of wizardry. There's only a plus one, right? That's kind of interesting. And then you have your dexterity, in this case, your missile attack bonus is plus one at the most, but you do get an armor class adjustment, and you can determine the referee, whether it's just applied to fighters or all the different groups. So um, that's kind of cool. So even goes even higher to minus four. Like this is descending armor class, too. Big difference between the two of them, right? Charisma, once again, has to do with loyalty. You can see it. the numbers go from minus two to, to plus four, but once again, basic fantasy is just minus three to plus three. So there's a different way in which he's doing the um, the abilities, which actually I, I like. I think it's it got a little more flavor to it, okay? Next one is the point we're going to make is thieving skills. I'm going to compare. So this is on page 12, all right? So we're going to do up to page 12 in basic fantasy. And it's down here. There's my thieving skills. And for Iron Falcon, it'll be on page 11, so we can compare. Um, it's much harder. I believe it's numbers 15, 10, 20, 10, right? Well, basic value is 25, 20, 30, 25, 80. Now, something else that's interesting, of course, this doesn't really change anything based on uh, different races. This is what it is. Iron Falcon gives you the race or non human adjustments, which is, I like that. It gives it a little more flavor once again. These are something to consider when you're playing a game, why you would we pick it. I like the fact that incremental climbs, both of them do the same thing, incrementally climb to about 10, and then they start like, you know, 
it, it becomes more more of a split, except for the climbing of the walls, which tend to be higher right off the bat for both of them, right? Climbing wall starts at 80, here in the other one starts at 87. So you get an idea here, right? So this is kind of an interesting feel to it, right? Let's talk about spells. There's a big difference in the spells, okay? So basic fantasy, that starts on page 19. Right? I'm going to go to 19 for that one, right? And for Iron Falcon, it's going to start on page 24. So I'll just go right to 24. And let's take a look at these guys, okay? Magic user spells. Now, basic fantasy, well, you can compare that one first. Um, it does clear up. Let's just do the magic user first, right? For magic user spells, it gives you first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth levels of spells, okay? Now, this is in basic fantasy. And they have a lot to choose from. I'm not saying they don't. Iron Falcon, on the other hand, goes all the way up to ninth level. There's a ton of spells. They really, the, the glass cannons, they give them a lot to work with, right? So there's a ton of spells. So the book itself is smaller. Iron Falcon is smaller. It's 143 pages compared to Basic Fantasy, which is 170. But I think there's more stuff in it because they took out a lot of the, how would you say, the explaining for certain things, okay? So that's kind of a cool thing, right? Um so that's interesting. The other ones, when you talk about the cleric spells, let's go back to cleric spells here. It goes up to six level, right? And there's like eight each level. It's pretty much what they got. Where Iron Falcon, you're going to get a little more. You're going to go up to seventh level. There's six each level up to like seventh level, and then they give you 11. Okay. That's kind of cool, right? So uh, you get a little more in the spell department, right? Uh, I'm going to jump this a little bit. I'm going to go down to the clerics because we're kind of talking about this cleric spells. Clerics in basic fantasy, all right, we look at the turn the undead column. So I'm going to go page 54 for this, okay? Uh, I found something very startling between the two groups, right? This is turning the undead, all right? And for Iron Falcon, it starts on page 21. You can tell somewhat, by the way, this is put together, they got parts of the, the beefy parts of the game, like in the first parts of these things, which I... Kind of, I can appreciate, right? Let's focus in on one thing. Let's say a fifth level. A fifth level, a cleric in Iron Falcon can start turning vampires if you roll a 20. You can't even attempt that. This is in basic fantasy, right? All the way down to 12th level. So, well, I'm sorry. I said it wrong. Uh, 10th level. So basically... The clerics are more high powered against the undead. You look at the way these stats are set up, okay? And look, you still all the way up to when do you get down to like it's like a 20, 20th level cleric has to roll a three to turn a vampire, right? Um, if we look at Iron Falcon, it turns them at 10th level, guaranteed, right? So that's kind of neat. <laughs> now, let's take a look at another thing. Obviously, this makes the cleric, it might have less spells, but they're actually more powerful against undead, right? So the reaction morale, so that's page 47 on this guy. So this is reaction, talks a little bit about this monster reactions. It gives you basically one, two, three, four, four tiers, okay? And Iron Falcon, and there's not much of a difference or just a slight one. We're going to go to page 18. Once again, they put a bunch of their... Important parts of running the game right up front, okay? Rational, it gives you three tiers, negative, uncertain, and then positive, okay? Where well, this one actually has an extra tier in there. Basic fantasy says immediate attack, right? That's if you roll a two, right? They just say it's just negative, may attack, right? It gives you a little more breathing room, I guess you might say. Let's look at the morale. Basic fantasy's morale, which would be 53, right? Come down here. Um... Is this this small area between two and twelve? Now, what's weird is all the monsters in Basic Fantasy have a morale number. Without getting to a bridge in this, if we go to any of these guys, they get a morale number. Morale is eight, carnivorous eight. It's like seven. They don't have static morale numbers in Iron Falcon. Okay, for Iron Falcon, when it comes to morale, and that's on page twenty. I'm gonna put that in here. Just roll it up a little bit, right? Page twenty. It just gives you a uh, Right here, a 2 through 12, 2d6, right, to figure out what's going on. They give you the idea of when you would roll for it. 
um, if there's like something happens, the numbers, they lose too many numbers or something that their tactical leader gets killed or something, you can make a rule for it. So they kind of leave it up to the DM to kind of decide when does something like that gets rolled, which I think is kind of cool because sometimes I don't roll for morale based on certain characters. Like they're protecting their home fight to the end, right? Let's look at a monster stat for a second, just because that'll shed some light on something. Let's go to, I got a 120 and we're going to look at a skeleton. They look about the same as far as their setup, okay? And for this one, it's on page 82. So I'm going to put it on page 82, all right? So you guys can compare these things side by side. Same thing. I like how it's just lined, okay? And then it just kind of gives you a brief thing down here. Um, this, in the book, they have a book that goes with it. And actually, just to talk about the book, the Handbook of Monsters, I... I have all the sorts of wizardry stuff, and they're huge volumes, and they're beautifully done. It's just sewn, and they got pictures on everything, and then they have a um, nice little excerpt, have a little writing, and I love the books. They're beautiful, except I don't really use them at the table because they are so big. They're cumbersome, and I don't actually like to carry them upstairs or sometimes we're playing out on the deck. I don't like carrying them out, so really they stay on the shelf. I know it sounds horrible. You have this beautiful book, and you don't use it, but what I end up using a lot of times when I'm playing uh, game mastering, that is, is 1978 version of the monster manual because the data is about the same it's kind of cool that the handbook of monsters is nice and it's condensed as a ton in there i, I kind of like when they have just the stats when i can go through it um both of them do that fairly well but you can tell this one just has the, almost the same format a lined kind of table here that kind of makes it easier to look at and grab your points of interest right and they kind of have it um set up the same way one thing i can say is that the font this is uh Serif font, the other one sans serif, I guess, for Iron Falcon. I like that kind of aerial font, I guess. Uh, it, it, I think it reads better for me because it's easier if I blow it up or something like that. If I want to show somebody something, anything I'm going to do with the book, I think it looks nicer and cleaner for me. You know, it's just me, personal preference, right? So about tack bonuses. Now, uh, this is one thing where Gonman admits that he made Iron Falcon because for some reason, basic fantasy was not considered an OSR because they used ascending armor class or something silly, right? And he, Wikipedia was really interesting. I saw one of his videos. And this is a table that kind of shows you your bonuses based on your level. And this may be a turnoff to certain people, and I get it. You might not like descending armor class. Personally, I kind of like it because people blurt and they say, I hit an armor class of such and such. It kind of keeps it mysterious based on the monster until I said, okay, you hit, and then they can start figuring out. So at least the first three, four swipes, people don't really know where the, the armor class of the monster is. It makes it interesting as I see it, right? But this is the table. Now, in the old DMG, back when we were kids, it was two-page spread, and you had all this information, and it was it's nice to have it all in one table for all the characters, including the monsters. That's cool. I like that. This makes it easier to use. Another thing that makes it super easy to use is the character sheet, which I'll pull up. All right, I'm trying to remember what it is. And he has a couple really cool, like one, this this campaign checklist, you know, are you going to do this or not? It's great for a DM. But here's the character sheet. And, of course, they got a nice little thing down the side for using the matrix. Now, you can also use Thaco. That's what I plan on using. And you might say, why would you use Thaco? It's so antiquated. But if you roll the dice, okay, you get your two-hit armor class zero number. Roll the dice, you have to subtract and find what armor class you hit. I'm actually going to use this in um, middle school math. I have a, an elective pullout thing where kids come in and they want to do this. So the price to pay is to use math if you want to play this game with me, which uh, it's going to be fun because it's going to help their mental math abilities. I'm trying to get them to do it without counting on their fingers. So this will be a, a journey I, I really would like to go on. Right, So that's kind of fun, right? Overall, you get the two different feels of the game. I think the other thing is basic fantasy. If you look at the book, and this this is the sticks, they have interesting little photos in here. Uh, multiple different artists that kind of put it together. Some of the stuff looks familiar, like you're throwing oil or using it for a different thing. Had a nice little thing about um, holy water and using an iron falcon and such. There's way less artwork in iron falcon and in all earnestness I, I don't mind that i think it's kind of like it's a set of rules and for me it makes it easier to to find what i'm looking for. one thing that's interesting is um he makes this humanocentric which means 
of the character races is dwarves, halflings, elves, and half elves have limitations. And that's not found in basic fantasy, uh, from what I can see. I think they can go as high as they can, right? So that I do like. I like the fact that there's limitation and that humans are high on the hog. It's a very Gary thing. That kind of works for me. But what I'm trying to get to is the nuts and bolts of the game. This is an example of like a character creation, which is easy, right? He even talks about, and this is something that's really nice um, in this book, is when you're rolling character stats, you can trade ability score points. This is sort of important. When you're really wanting to fire, but you have this, you can swap, swap out points to make the character you want, especially if you plan on rolling straight down and then moving things. And um, it kind of works nice if you're going to do 46 drop the lowest for doing a character creation, and then you can move points to find the, the character you want to play. That's kind of nice. So I should have put that on my list. Sorry, I didn't. So going down here, if you think about it, when you get finally down into the spell list, this is before it gets crazy in a bridge, the rule sets kind of come all the way down to about 22. Uh, page 23, you get into the saving throws, right? And then boom, you're into the spells, and then they're all listed. So it's, it's a tighter rule set which kind of works out nice. Well, hopefully this give you an idea of the comparison of two different games. I'll give you more of an update when playing it with kids, uh, how it comes across, especially when you're trying to use the setting armor class. But I hope you enjoyed this and leave comments below.